Did you hear, I know pff, hardly anybody has ever been talking about it. Did you hear there's going to be a vacancy on the U.S. Supreme Court? Yeah, one of them just said, you know, I think I'm going to retire. It's weird. And Joe Biden has vowed since 2020 that his pick for the next justice would be a black woman. Oh, thank goodness. I don't, I don't know if that black woman is great at being a justice or just okay at being a justice. As long as she's black, we've got to have that. Now, I wonder where he got that idea. Well, in 2019, a little nonprofit that's barely even worth mentioning, Demand Justice, gave Joe Biden and the other Democrats running for president a short list of acceptable Supreme Court nominees, yeah? So, oh, the whole world's upside down. Why not make the, anyway, uh, Demand Justice. They put a list together and on that list was a name named uh, Ketanji, Ketanji Brown, I see I'm destroying it. What's her name? Kachanji, and I love Kachanji. We are like this, Brown Jackson. Then after taking office last year, Biden appointed her the U.S. Court of Appeals in, for D.C. Now that's like, everybody knows, that's a stepping stone to the Supreme Court. And he got his, their, her name from these guys. They must have been really, really happy, right? So again, I, you don't even need to mention them. Well, since the news broke out about Justice Stephen Breyer's retirement, the top name that surfaces over and over again in the media is Katanji Brown Jackson. Now, I am sure Joe Biden is totally making his own decisions when it comes to Supreme Court nominees. So who is demand justice? What is their agenda? Well, they were started in 2018 with money from something called the 1630 Fund. All right, the mission of the 1630 Fund was opposing President Trump's judicial nominees. Later that year, Demand Justice, little group, spent $5 million to oppose Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination. They even started a website called Stop Kavanaugh. Yeah, that was these guys. They are also the group that did the Handmaid's Tale stunt to protest Kavanaugh in the halls outside the Senate hearing. Remember that? That was these guys. In 2020, they spent $10 million opposing the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett. Wow, for a little group we've never heard of, they've got a lot of money. They also released grade reports of Senate Democrats rating their job in stopping Trump's judicial nominees. Then, the same guys, demand justice, advertised against Democrats who had the lowest grades. In 2019, demand justice co-founders Brian Fallon and Chris Kang published their instructions to Democrats about how to handle judicial nominees once Trump was out of office. Demand justice, they're great, and they're very passionate about packing the Supreme Court. You know, last year, these crazy kids, they joined seven other groups to form a coalition in support of court packing called Unrig the Courts. You can't make this up. Also, last year, Demand Justice waged a campaign. This, you're not gonna find this hard to believe because they're unrelated completely. They launched a campaign to pressure Justice Stephen Breyer to retire. They even drove a mobile billboard around the Supreme Court with this message, quote, Breyer, retire. It's time for a black uh, woman, Supreme Court justice. There's no time to waste. Isn't that crazy? And he ends up doing it, but I don't think he's, do you think they, before she became the White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, guess where she worked? Guess where she worked? Yeah. She was a communications consultant for Demand Justice. But more importantly, Biden's Supreme Court nominee selection, he's making it all by himself. It's in good hands because, well, he's not making it himself, actually. I mean, he's got some people working for her. Paige Erwig, she is the head of the White House Judicial Nominations Team. Okay, guess where she used to work? Yeah. Deputy Chief Counsel, Demand Justice. My gosh, it's a tight little family there, isn't it? 
Now, by the way, I want to remind you that these guys, um, their short list of Supreme Court nominees, um, Biden appointed four of them to the jobs in his administration, including the Health and Human Services Secretary, uh, and uh, all of these people, uh, Civil Rights of Education, Department of uh, HHS, Associate Attorney General, all from these guys. I mean, these were the one. What a coincidence. So where do these people get that kind of money? Because I was, you know, part of the Tea Party. We never had a million dollars to throw around, let alone these. This kind of money? Who are these people? Well, it's part of an incredibly power, uh, powerful dark money funnel. And the organizer at the top of this funnel are these people, Arabella Advisors. This was started in 2005 by Eric Kessler, a veteran of the Clinton White House. Arabella says it provides, quote, strategic guidance for effective philanthropy. Wow. I guess promoting and funding things like abortion is philanthropy to the left now. So Arabella, that's a business, by the way. This is not a 501c3. They're making money here. Uh, they're very serious about things, and they manage five separate funds or funnels. I like to almost think of them as laundry machines. What you'd be laundering, I don't know, but that's the way I like to think of them. So they have five separate funds, but we're going to focus on four of them tonight. Money flows into each of these funds from donors. And then they spit out things like demand justice. I love these guys. They were everywhere. It's a fire hose to hundreds of nonprofits, all from them. So, for example, demand justice is in the flow chart here under 1630. So you can give to 1630. All right, all you want. But you'll never be connected to demand justice because the 1630 fund just gives, oh my gosh, almost laundered cash here. So we've erased all traces of where that money comes from. Oh, Tides Foundation, you were special once, but it's 2022. In 2020, the 1630 Fund collected individual donations as large as $50 million. We don't know who gave that $50 million. But then 1630 gave out grants to over 200 groups. Now remember, a donor can't give over $200 to a political action committee without having their name someplace posted. But a donor can give these people $50 million or more. And they in turn, because we all have grown to trust the brand of 1630, right? And so we know they're going to take care of our money in the way we want it. So we know that they're going to shepherd that money until it finds the right sheep. Oh, and any pack, any of these, anything that they have going on, Arabella, Arabella funds do exactly that, okay? 1630 alone gave $63 million to Biden and Democratic super PACs during the 2020 campaign, including everybody's favorite, the Lincoln Project. The nonprofits that these funds give money all promote and support far left causes, and they're all over the map. Some are legitimate organizations with budgets and staffs, but hundreds of these Nonprofits are more like, oh, I don't know, a shell nonprofit, pop up nonprofits created to make them look like they're they're local people just like you. I mean, sure. Yeah, I grew up right around Boston. I've lived in Boston my whole life. Uh huh. In 2020, the 1630 fund alone spent four hundred and ten million dollars to help Democrats with attack ads and get out the vote campaigns. My gosh, 410 just for the ads? 
Wow, this is a really good fund. Now, that's more than the Democratic National Committee spent. Seven million dollars of that went to a group called Piedmont Rising, who campaigned against North Carolina Republican Senator Tom Tillis, who was running for re-election. Well, some of the attack ads, I mean, some people would call them mis, dis, or malinformation. They were made to look like they were local news reports from the North Carolina Examiner. Watch. Breaking news today, the U.S. House has passed a law to give Medicare the power to negotiate lower drug prices. But advocates are worried that Senator Tom Tillis plans to block this measure. Wow. I, I'm sure I would watch her every night if North Carolina Examiner was a real news outlet. Isn't this what the left says the right does all the time? This is mis, dis, and malinformation. Because that organization doesn't exist. It was nothing more than an anti-Senator Tillis campaign by the nonprofit Piedmont Rising, which was funded by 1630. Who's doing the fake news again? 